Guys, welcome back. So we thought we would uh, touch on a little bit of a hot topic in the industry mm. right now and uh, something again, you know, we're, we're listening to the feedback as we always do, but uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the utility iron versus the hybrid. Which has been requested a ton since a ton. we did five wood versus hybrid. Yep. One of the first comments was, can you do the same thing, but driving iron and hybrid? Exactly. So finally, we're doing Here it. Here we are. So we, um, we wanted to use with the utility iron, we didn't want to kind of give we will do a comparison video with all the utility yeah, irons, but yeah, yeah. today we just wanted to use one as a comparison. And, and, and you know, we actually don't have the full selection of left-handed uh, utility irons yet, so I'm going to sub in for you today uh, and hit some so with nothing, the... Nothing wrong with that yeah. whatsoever. So we're using this guy today. P790 UDI. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Two arm. Uh, hazardous black shaft. So some that shaft I've used in the past, um, you know, quite like it. So. Mm. Um, a good, certainly a good little club. And what we're going to compare that to is actually my own gamer um, hybrid. Just your standard run of the mill club. Why don't you let us know what that thing's about? Well, this is, yeah, this is definitely not the, you know, this is not off the shelf. This is, a, <laughs> this actually, kidding. this is probably the only one in the world that exists of this spec. So uh, a few years back, I was actually on, on staff with Nike. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I love to do have loved to do over the last kind of seven or eight years is every year um, have have a, a different relationship with different companies just so that I can learn more about them. Interesting. So yeah. and, and you know go to Scotts, uh, go to Phoenix and you know do the tour at Ping, go to the oven and see mm. Nike, you know Cali, TaylorMade, etc. Um, and and when I was at Nike, it was interesting talking to them about hybrid because the the pro series of hybrids they actually didn't have one Tour Pro playing it. None of them played not, it. Not one. If you think back to when um, Nike were, were in existence, they were always five woods uh, that were in the Nike staff players bag. There wasn't one Nike player that used a hybrid. Interesting. So the reason for that is the, the sleeve on the Vapor Pro was actually a 335 um, or designed for a 335 shaft. Which is the narrower. Which yep. is like, like, a, a, like a driver, driver. or a fairy wood. Yep. There isn't one company out there who makes a 335 hybrid from a mm. premium shaft maker. Right. So um, they, they had a, a stock one, but it wasn't, it wasn't like something a, a tour player would use. Okay. So when I was in staff with Nike, I thought, you know, this is a, this is a problem because it's a really nice, really nice hybrid. It's too bad that people can't get to use it. So I um, reached out to Accra and I asked them if they could make a, a specific shaft for the mm. tour which was of my favorite Ben profile in the hybrid, which was the, the Tour Z Extreme. Yep. And could they make that in, in 335? And one of the, the really great things about, you know, our, our job and our position and that type of thing is we get these one-offs. Mm. So Accra actually went to their factory in Japan, made uh, a handful of these shafts, um, and they were designed for us to take them to Nike and start getting them in tour players' hands, Nick Watney, oh, Molinari, yeah, yeah. all those sorts of guys. At that point, they went out of business. Um, it's bad timing. <laughs> bad timing. So, so this little hybrid has stayed in my bag. I absolutely love it. Um, people I mean, ask me all the time. I was going to say it you is. try a lot of clubs, so it's obviously working pretty well for you. It's just it's super safe for me. Mm. Uh, it's 230 yards. I just know what it's going to do. It's it's just a great little club. Awesome. So we're comparing that to this. Yeah. Um, let's not even talk about what we think is going to happen. Let's just see you hit him. Okay. Um, and then we're going to do a full analysis of the ball flight afterwards. So we'll do a little baseline with mine and then we'll, we'll test that the, the two iron against it. Yeah, that sounds that. good. Okay. Okay, so that's I can see why that's a consistent club for you. That hybrid, yeah, just nice straight shots. No surprises. Yeah, uh, this is it's very consistent. It's it's very straight. Your you dispersion was small, very small dispersion. And I love hitting out of funky lies. Mm. Like you know, if I need to dig one out a little bit, if it's sitting down, 
I, I can do it with that little thing. It just gives me tons of confidence. It's got quite a bit of, what do they call that? Is that camber in the sole? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's got a, just a, a ton of curve. Like, I remember at TaylorMade, we used to, it, there was actually an additional fairwoods. It was called the smiley face. Yeah, because it had had more sort of the arc one. to the bottom of it. Um, that should help you get out of yeah, those lies. That's exactly it. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna see you hit that driving iron now. We got our baseline from the hybrid, so mm -hmm. let me just tag this. Sorry. This thing, I mean, it it looks it looks strong and loft. I mean, see the difference in length. So it looks lower loft to you, even though it's the it same. It does. It really does. I mean, if if I put them side by side, they're the same length. Exactly the same length. Oh, they're the so same length too? That's exactly. interesting. Well, this is a good comparison then. I just, yeah, it just looks super mean. Okay, uh, that was interesting for me uh, on the other side of the camera this time to, to really kind of experience those two. I haven't hit that P790 drive before. You haven't tried before. it either. Yeah. Haven't, that's the first time I've hit the UDI. I've watched Cam hit it and yep. some of the other boys, but um, it has some, some serious, serious heat to it. Ball speed was, was amazing how much more you got out of that thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with the, the very last shot I hit with it was, um, it was 240 yeah, in the air, 258 total, 145. Uh, ball speed driver minutes. numbers for someone. Yeah. yeah, I mean, honestly, not and not not bad driver numbers. Yeah. Thirteen launch twenty eight hundred. If if you want to spin that a fraction more, so hmm. um, I think the thing with the driver arm for me, it looked it looked quite strong and loft, but to still be able to flight it at ninety nine feet, which is like that number that you around your speed, that's nice, right? Should be right quite good feet. around hundred. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I was descent angle surprised. of forty. Is that okay? It's okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, certainly, I won't be trying to chase too many front pins. Uh, with a, a you know 40 degree land angle, but um, you did you did draw that one. So let's say you played a yeah. fade, you'd probably be able to bump that up right. a little bit and be a little steeper with it. But and we did see the spin rate a little lower, didn't we, with oh, the, far the P790? Lower. So looking at the the sort of averages, if we go to the comparison page, launch angle the same, which is crazy. Interesting. Yeah, we lost uh, about 800 RPMs of spin, mm -hmm. uh, 750 tons um, of spin. So and you know, picked up, picked up a good what 16 yards in the air. Yeah, I mean, if you if you were thinking that maybe the newer technology of the P790 is a mm -hmm. factor with the ball speed, so let's say you had a you know yeah. the very fastest hybrid, you may get closer in ball speed, but the spin numbers make sense. Like it makes sense that a hybrid's with the CG location being further back, you get mm -hmm. more backspin. Yeah, and you got more distance from a flatter flight. And you look at the trajectories there quite a bit different. Yeah. I mean, you hit it further, but managed to actually be around the same height. That's it. It's that, not what you normally see. That is the interesting thing. Let's let's have a look at the, the actual height itself. It was literally the exact same average <laughs> height, yeah. 91 uh, feet. So yeah, I mean, just, uh, just a little bit extra firepower from the, the UDI. Really cool. Just uh, a little bit quicker. So for me, then it would come down to, and I think this is an important, um, sort of piece to note guys it, it all comes does that fit into my bag does exactly. that you know how does that go, go in relation to the four iron stuff you know i would probably be keen to test my four iron and see i actually think i've maybe missed a trick in that my hybrid and four iron are probably a little too similar right they've now. gotten too close yeah with the extra spin yeah i mean ball speed for me with six irons about one 130, um, 134, 5 iron, 130. So probably 4 iron for me is something that's quite close to, to hybrid. Hmm. So I might need to look at that old favorite making a departure. Yeah, so I mean, if you're looking at why PGA Tour players are using a driving iron, yeah. this is a perfect example, because they'll, they'll get, let's say, 152 ball speed. Right. They'll hit it like 280 with something that's only, what, 40 mm -hmm. inches long or 41 inches long. Yeah. So that's what, that's what driving iron means. You've got driver numbers yeah. with an iron. 
that, that's it, and it gives you the confidence. I actually did get quite a lot of confidence mm. from the way uh, the way it looked. I personally feel better with an iron than I do Which with a with a, a, a fairway wood or anything like that. I feel like I've got a little bit more control. I think you're not the only one either. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people that comment that they just don't want to hit a hybrid. They like the look right. of a long iron. And you mentioned it was pretty forgiving. You, you said you struck a couple a little off and flew plenty I, far. Yeah, I did, certainly didn't hit it. Hit it, you know, absolutely perfect. The first one, the first one, I felt like I missed it and it went 2:45. Yeah, that was the one that got my attention. Yeah. And then I hit two kind of similar ones after that, quite, you know, quite similar. Then the last one I hit really, really Smoked solid, down, yeah. and you know, that's where you see a little bit extra. Quite nice to have another gear uh, it is, with yeah. it if you, if you want to hit it a little bit further. So certainly for me, 260 out of a you know, out of a driving iron has not been in my wheelhouse before. That's not been yeah. in the repertoire. So something that I would definitely consider. Very cool. So take it to a different swing speed player. Mm -hmm. You got to look at your trajectory. If you're someone who's a low ball hitter, yeah. pretty unlikely that a driving iron's for you. The hybrid's going to give you more height. In North America, you know, I was actually having a conversation um, with one of my, my best buddies back home today who, uh, who fits at Turnbury. And we were talking about, you know, the, the kind of, the, the Scottish delivery yeah. versus the North American delivery and, and how in Scotland, you know, they tend to be a little bit steeper and squeeze the ball out there, mm. which is great for these driving irons. It, kind of these, these driving irons, you know, if you go and play the Lynx courses, you can hit them, you know, 280 for with sure. a bit of run and that sort of stuff. But, you know, it's not really conducive to good fairway wood hitting. And mm. you, but you can see the value for those types of guys with these driving irons. Oh, yeah. Over here, I just don't, you know, I don't know if, if you lost too much speed someone loses the velocity and loses the launch angle, uh, the spin rate is not going to be enough to keep the ball in the air. Exactly. That ball is going to be coming in, you know, screaming flat and, and yeah. it will just bounce and just scoot through the back of greens. Yeah, I like what we've done here with this video and the five wood one, because mm -hmm. now you have three uh, ball flight that's windows. Great, that's a great point. Highest ball flight five wood, yep. medium ball flight hybrid, lowest ball flight driving iron. And we've shown that all things being equal, we could probably get similar distances. Mm -hmm. I think yours, you'd agree your hybrid's probably a little slow on ball speed. Yeah, it is. It probably is. Yeah. If you use like a Rogue or something, let's say they're the same, mm -hmm. um, you're looking at that being your medium height yeah. shot and your, mm -hmm. your driving arm being the lowest. For sure. Yeah. Well, that's good. Cool. Hopefully this is what everyone was kind of looking for out of this uh, discussion. A little starter to the segment. Um, yeah. Something to get us kind of kicked off here with mm -hmm. these utility irons. And we, we have uh, Mizuno Fly High, MP Fly mm -hmm. High. We have... Uh, the, the U65 from Strixon, which is just about to be replaced. The uh, yeah, U85 yeah. is coming. Popular ones though. Yep, we've got the Callaway Apex UT, we've got the Titleist TMB. So we're gonna get you know, to hitting all of those in the next few weeks and you know, give you guys an idea as to what's, uh, what's good out there. And obviously some shafts that work in them as well. Yeah, it'd be cool to dial, help people dial that in. Definitely, yeah. exactly. Very good. cool. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.